All right, so let's undo your graythemic uh, equation. <laughs> so it's a very simple question that we can easily answer. So watch to the end. So we've got two different bases, three and nine. And so let's try to convert one of them to the other. And so the best way is, let me show you first of all, you convert from one base to the other. So let's say if you add log of A, right? C, and then you wanted to convert this to uh, another log, let's say B. The result would be log of B divided by log of B. Now, what do you do? You get the C to be on top and then the A down. That's how you convert from one base to the other. Okay. So, for us to solve this one in a simpler way, think of the one that you're able to express in another term. So, if I look at 9, I know I can express 9 in terms of 3 as 3 to the power 2. So, therefore, it's optimal to convert to base 3. Okay, that's the strategy that I like using. So, let's convert everything to base 3. So, we we'll maintain the first part to be log of 3 x plus 4 and then now we're converting to base 3. So we're going to have log 3 on top and then log 3 down, right? And then we are dividing these two. I gave you what to do. I gave you a shortcut. So this is on top. So 27 minus 2x. And then divided by that 9 there. So we've converted to base 3 equal to 0. Now, this 9 that you're seeing there, you now understand why I wanted to have it expressed in terms of 3 to the power 2. So that's the next stage. You can write it on paper. Now, if you are familiar with bases, or if you're familiar with logs, log 3, 3 to the power 2, you understand that these two can actually become the coefficient of the log, right? Okay, so our next stage, log 3 x plus 4 minus log of 3 27 minus 2x and then divided by now we're going to have 2 log base 3 3 now some of you already know that if you've got the base matching up with the number there this is actually going to be equal to your 1 right so this is now even more than simplified. So what do we have at this point? We now have log 3 x plus 4 minus log of 3 27 minus 2x. This all is being is divided by 2 and then equal to 0. And then now you might guess our next stage is going to be, next step is going to be very, very simple, right? So what do we have? So we have log 3x plus 4. We can have the other base, the other side, so it becomes positive. Log of 3, and then we have 27 minus 2x or divided by a 2. Now, if we had to close and multiply, what do we expect to have? This 2. We're going to have 2 log 3 x plus 4 equal to log 3 27 minus 2 x. Now, just as like we moved it, this again can become the power of that, right? So it becomes the power 2, so it disappears there. We've used the same logarithmic rule that we used when coming up with the 2. Remember we had log 3, 3, the power 2. And then we moved that to here, just so we could make this be equal to 1, and then we made with it 2. Right, so we've applied the same principle to make 2 to the power there. 
now now that you can see that we actually have the the bases matching up and so for that to be true these have to be equal so we can just ignore the bases the logs with the bases and then you just have x plus 4 the part 2 is equal to 27 minus 2x and so now this simplifies to a simpler quadratic function right if you had to expand that you're going to have x times x x squared and then you're going to have 8x plus 16 I'll leave the multiplication to you I believe you understand that if you've got the power 2 it implies you've got two brackets having x plus 4 inside of them and I believe you know how to multiply that for you to be doing logs and this is equal to 27 minus 2x If we to correct the like terms, we're going to have x squared plus 8x plus 2x and then plus 16 minus 27 equal to 0. But we have x squared plus 10x, 16 minus 27, it's going to be a minus 11, right? equal to a zero. Can you think of a way that we can simplify that faster? The product of course is a minus 11. The sum is a 10. Factors. Two numbers will give you negative 11 and then we give you 10. What do you think of positive 11 and a negative 1? So these are the factors. So Whenever you've got the coefficient of a 1, the shortcut is you're going to have x plus 11, x minus 1. We are just adding or using the factors as they are. Okay, equal to 0. In other terms, the answers just become change the signs of the factors whenever you've got a coefficient of a positive 1. So therefore, what we have is x is equal to negative 11, and then x is equal to positive 1. So these are the two answers and of course we are at liberty of trying them out to see if they are actually going to be the possible solutions. So if we are to try negative 11 we will have log 3 our x negative 11 plus 4 minus log 9 27 minus 2 times negative 11 there. You have log 3. Negative 11 plus 4. 4 minus 11 is what? That should be a minus 7, right? So all this is to be avoided, right? I don't want to do with negatives already. So, if we were to try 1, that's simple and straightforward. Log 3, 1 plus 4, minus log 9, 27, minus 2. We have log 3, and then they are going to have a 5, and then minus log 9 27 minus 2 is 25 equal to 0 and so this you can actually prove it's actually doable you can see we've got common we've got something common right so as usual you'd want to convert your log 9 to 3 right that you have minus log of 9 if you convert to base 3 to be base 3 and then 25 over log of 3 and then that's uh, 9 right so 9 of course like we know 
can be <laughs> represented as 3 to the power 2, right? We can remove a 9 and put 3 to the power 2, and then the 2 can just become the coefficient there. So at this becomes equal to 1. And so at this point, you have log 3, 5, minus log 3, 25 can be expressed as 5 to the power 2 over 2. Now that 2 that is on top as the power of 5 can become the coefficient, right? That it becomes 2, right? Like that. And then the 2, which is the coefficient, can divide with the 2 on the bottom. And then you can actually see that this part and that part are the same and they're subtracting. Therefore, they are equal to 0. So that's how you verify some of the answers. So it's not always a requirement to verify your answers. But just to make sure that you're so sure of what you've done. That's how you can prove it yourself. You don't have to put this in your paper. You know, solutions just end where you find the value. Okay. So that's it for this question.